So our first step with setting up a post route is making sure that the data that we're posting is A-OK. -okay. So we want to make a validator here to validate that all of the data that we're posting is as we expect and so that we can display errors with feedback for the user. So let's go ahead and hide our browser back away. And let's go ahead and open up our terminal. And I'm going to open up a new tab here just so that we don't have to actually stop our server. I just hit Command T to do that. And let's do node ace make and add in a validator. And we'll put all of our auth based validations inside of an auth validator file. So with that, we now have a file at, at validators auth ts we can go ahead and jump into there to specify a validation for our three fields here so let's scroll up to our app section go into our validators off and there it is inside of here let's go ahead and export a const called register validator this will equal vine.compile and expect a vine object inside of it inside of this object we're going to have our full name which should be a vine string and we'll set the max length here to 254 characters then we'll have an email this will be a vine string as well with a max length of 254 characters again and it should be of type email and we'll go ahead and normalize that email there as well then lastly we have our password type vine string and you can add in whatever requirements you want for your password here. We're just going to ensure that it's at least eight characters long. Cool. So there's our validator. Let's go ahead and make use of it by jumping inside of our routes.ts file. And right down here inside of our post handler is where we want to make use of it. So we'll go ahead and do const data equals await ctx request validate using our register. And if we scroll down in our autocomplete here, we can import register validator right there. Now, where we ultimately want to send our users after they register, we don't have completed yet. And we also aren't going to quite register our user at this point in time. We're just going to stop and focus specifically on validation, making sure that that works OK and that we are able to display feedback to our users. So we're just going to leave data here unused for right now. We can go ahead and add in a console log if we want to verify that we are receiving it. So we can console.log that data, but we'll leave everything else as is for right now. If we now go ahead and jump back into our browser, it's going to do a refresh there. And let's go ahead and just hit register with all of our fields empty. You'll see that we get redirected right on back, which is our anticipated behavior. But this is actually happening for a different reason. And that's because our validation has now failed. If we take a look at our post data, we see that we send up completely empty values. If we take a look at the response, we're going to see our page information that came back for inertia to use. Specifically, it's going to have our prop information with errors inside of it. And you'll see each one of these has full name, email, and password must be defined. So these are our validation errors that we want to display to the user underneath our form fields. Furthermore, since this came back in the form of our page with prop error information on it, it's readily accessible inside of our pages. If we take a look at the view dev tools here, open up our auth layout and take a look at our register page. There's our form. If we scroll down a little bit, we'll have our attributes because we haven't registered this as a prop quite yet with our errors of full name, email, and password inside of it. So we want to reach for this errors object to display out these actual validation errors, noting that it's coming back as an array of strings. Now, as a reminder, this errors object is being provided because if we jump back into our config, our inertia config, inside of our shared data, we have our errors coming from our session flash messages and it's getting specifically our errors. So these will be our validation errors. So that's where that's coming from. Now, inside of our register page, we want to scroll up to our script and get access to that prop information that's being provided. So we can do define props and specify a type for this with errors. Now the type of our errors is a record because it's an object and the key of the object is a string. The key here will be the field name and then the value for that key is a string array with each of the errors for that key inside. So now we can make use of our errors because they'll be properly ingested as props. So we can scroll down to our fields and underneath our label, let's do a div v if errors dot full name. Then we can render out errors dot full name dot and we can just join those together with a comma. Since the errors will actually be an array, if we have more than one, then we'll just comma the limit them. Otherwise, it will just display that error. We also want to make this error message red. So we can do class text red 500. And we'll also make that text small too. So that these are grouped together, let's go ahead and wrap our label and div here together with a class grid. And let's put a gap one on that there as well. Cool. So before we apply that to our other fields, let's go ahead and save that and just make sure that everything's working OK by jumping back into our browser. Refresh there and we get a type error. So cannot read properties of undefined reading full name. And we're getting this error because our errors is actually undefined. So we're trying to read full name off of undefined inside of our template. There's a couple of ways that we can fix this. First, we could make this prop optional and then make sure that all of our usages here are optional optional as well. That would certainly fix it. So if we go ahead and give this a refresh, that's one option to fix things up. And now if we go ahead and hit register, 
there's our error showing a okay. An alternative approach that we have is we can provide an errors object for every request just to kind of normalize things a little bit on ourselves by jumping back into our inertia config file and defaulting our errors here to an empty object if we do indeed do not have any errors. So either one of those approaches is perfectly fine. I'm going to go ahead and go with the empty object just so that we always have an errors key to read from, but that's completely up to you. So with that applied, we go ahead and verify that it still works by jumping back into our browser. We see everything do a refresh, hit register, and sure enough, still working a-okay. 